welcome to Fibonacci Quadratic and Simple Geometric Series with Cube Education. In this lecture, you will understand what a geometric series is and calculate the nth term of a geometric series. You will understand what a quadratic sequence is and calculate the nth term of a quadratic sequence. And finally, you will understand what the Fibonacci sequence is and use the Fibonacci sequence to solve problems. Okay, so first of all, let's look at geometric sequences. So a geometric sequence is one where to get from one term to the next, you multiply by the same number each time. This number is called the common ratio, r. So let's have a look at this series of numbers. We have four terms. The first term is 2, the second term is 10, third term is 50, and the fourth term is 250. So we can probably see, but if we can't, we could do 10 divided by 2, which gives us 5. Okay, so that means I've times by 5 to get to 10 and then 50 divided by 10 is 5 and 250 divided by 50 is 5 so we know that that geometric sequence our common ratio is 5 we times by 5 every time and to work that out if you can't see that you've times by 5 quickly you can do a division this number divided by this one or this number divided by this one or this number divided by this one and they'll all give you the common ratio of 5 okay so Here's another geometric sequence. We have 90, a minus 30, 10, a minus 3 and a third. So what's happened here then? So minus 30 divided by 90 is minus a third, okay? And 10 divided by minus 30 is minus a third. Um, and minus a third divided by 10. <laughs> and minus 3 and a third divided by 10 is minus a third. So here our common ratio is actually minus one third. Now, don't panic too much. You shouldn't really get one that difficult in your foundation exam. Uh, however, this will come up on the higher tier. You will get geometric sequences, but they won't be fractions <laughs> unless you're on the higher tier. Now, what this rule actually means is the common ratio is u2 divided by u1. And that means the second term divided by the first term. Okay, second term divided by first term. That's how you get the common ratio. So how do we find the nth term then? So remember that r is the number you times by to get to the next term. And a is the first term of the sequence. So here we have the first term which is 2, the second term is 10, the third term is 50. So the first term in the sequence is 2. And r is your common ratio, the number you have to times by. So 2 times 5 makes 10. Okay, so I know. And 10 times 5 is 50. Okay, so this one is R. Okay, uh, sorry, this one is A. A is the first term in the sequence. So the second term in the sequence must be A times whatever R is because we have to multiply by that to get to here. We have to multiply again to get the third term, so then it will be R squared and R to, the eight, R to the power of 3 and so on. Okay, so as you can see, the first term is 1, 2, 3 and 4. And if you look at the powers, it's one less than the term. One less than the term. So we can write that like this. We can remember this rule for a geometric series as AR to the power of N minus 1. And this is the same for all geometric sequences. So, your checklist. You'll need to find or use these. R, which is, remember, is the common ratio, the number you times by to get to the next term, and A, the first term in the sequence. So let's have a look at an example question. The second term of a geometric sequence is 4, and the fourth term is 8. Find the values of A, the common ratio, or ration, B, first term, and C, the tenth term. So A, we've got to try and find the common ratio. The second term of a geometric sequence is 4, and the fourth term is 8. So we need to think about what terms we have and what we need to find. So at the minute we have one, two, three, four terms. We don't know the first one, we don't know the third one. Okay. However, we do know that our second term is A multiplied by R. We know that because our first term is always A and our second term is always A times whatever R is. So then this one would be AR, cu AR squared and then AR cubed. Okay, so we know that one. 
Okay, so this is what we have then. I've just put it onto a different slide so that you can see it clearly. Now, remember, we can use um, the fact that this second term being divided by this first term will give us what r is in order to help us find the answer to this equation. So we know that 1, um, ar equals 4, and the second thing we know is that ar cubed equals 8. So we can actually do four, uh, 8 divided by 4, which will give us r squared, which gives us 2. If r squared is 2, then r must be the square root of 2. Okay, now the reason it gives us r squared is because you're actually just dividing by one bunch of ar, which means it gives us kind of this, the r that we need for this, and we don't, we want the r that we need for this. So r squared is 2, but the, the r on its own is the square root of 2. Okay, so now using ar equals 4, we know that r is the root, is root 2. So we can say that a times root 2 equals 4. And we can also say that a equals 4 divided by the square root of 2. Because to find a, we need to divide by the square root of 2 to get it on its own. So if a equals 4 divided by the square root of 2, which means that a equals 2 root 2. Okay? So now that we know that a equals 2 root 2, we can find out our next term. So the tenth term we've now got to find. Okay, so if we just go back to the question one second, we were supposed to find A, the common ratio, which we did, B, the first term, which we did. So we know what R is, and we know what the first term is. Okay, and now we just need to find the tenth term. So, the nth term is AR to the power of n minus 1. We know this because it's the same for every geometric sequence and it's the bit that I went through right at the beginning of the lecture. So if you're a bit confused, go back to that section. So we know that the nth term equals AR n to the minus 1. Okay, so we know that the tenth term must be AR to the power of 9 because our n is 10 minus 1, which is 9. So now we know that a is 2 root 2, we know that r is root 2, and we just know that this is to the power of 9. So we must do a r to the power of 9 equals a, which is 2 root 2, multiplied by the square root of 2 to the power of 9. And if you put all of that into your calculator, you will end up with 2 root 2 to the power of 10. Okay, now you could write that as 2 times 2 to the power of 5, because if you did the uh, square root 2 to the power of 10, this is what it will give you, leaving you with an answer of 2 to the power of 6. And all of that can be done on your calculator. This bit here, if you don't know that it means this, just put this into your calculator. 2 times the square root of 2 to the power of 10, and it will give you 2 to the power of 6. So, once we put that in our calculator, 2 to the power of 6, which means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Tenth term would be 64. Okay, so um, we're going to move on now then to quadratic equations, uh, sorry, to quadratic sequences. And um, the geometric sequences that you will get in your assignment will be quite simple. You only have to have simple geometric sequences for foundation anyway. So that question that we've just been through was 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 quite tricky. Um, please try and get your head around it and um, you know revise. Uh, but your assignment questions probably won't be quite that difficult. Okay, so let's have a look at some quadratic sequences now. So if we have a look at this sequence here, you can see that it's going up in different values every time. So you've got plus 4, plus 6, plus 8, and plus 10. And a quadratic sequence, um, this is what a quadratic sequence is. So the first difference is different. It always increases. But the second difference always remains the same. It remains constant. A sequence is linear if the first difference is constant. And a sequence is quadratic if the second difference is constant. The position to term rule of a quadratic sequence is always of the form t to n, which is going to be your term, equals an squared plus bn plus c. 
where the coefficients a, b, and c are constants, and a is not equal to zero. So that just means that a is um, zero. It is not. It's not zero. So it's any other number other than zero. It can be negative. It can be positive. But it must not be zero. Okay. So let's just explain that in a bit more detail. So a sequence is linear if the first difference is constant. So can you remember from the linear equa uh, linear sequences lesson that the first difference here was always the same number? And a sequence is quadratic if the second difference is constant. So we they do the first difference, and then if you check from 4 to 6, it's 2, 6 to 8, it's 2, and 8 to 10, it's 2. So the position to term rule of a quadratic sequence. So when we have our uh, linear uh, nth term or our geometric nth term, they're quite easy. But with a quad quadratic sequence, we have a squared because quadratics are always about squared values. I know we have squared values in geometric series, but it's not quite the same. So here we have a n squared plus b n plus c, where the coefficients of a, b, and c are all numbers. They're all constants and they're not zero. They have to be a number. The coefficient is always the coefficient a is always half the value of the second difference. Okay, so in this case, it would be 1. So let's have a look at some examples. Find the position to term rule for the sequence 2, 9, 20, 35, 54. Consider the first and second differences. Here's our numbers. Here's our first difference. 11, 7, 11, 15, and 19. And now let's look at the second difference. The second difference is 4. The second difference is 4, so therefore a equals 4 divided by 2, which equals 2. Because a is always half uh, the number of the second difference. And the second difference in this case is 4, so a must be 2. So first of all, our, our nth term rule starts with 2n squared. Okay. So because that this is a 2, then the start of our equation starts with 2n squared. To determine the rest of the formula, subtract 2n squared from each term of the sequence. Now what that means is, if we look at our sequence, 2 is the first term, it's the first one, number 1. This is number 2, number 3, number 4, number 5. But because 2 is our first term, 1 will go where n is. So 1 squared is 1, and then 1 times 2 is 2. So the first answer would be 2. 9 is the second term, so we put 2 in there. 2 squared is 4, 4 times this 2 is 8. So we continue to do that all the way along. And we subtract them. So we end up with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. The position to term rule for the new sequence is n minus 1. The reason for this is because n is your first term. And if n is my first term, okay, well, my actual new sequence has 0 here. so to get from n being 1 to 0, I need to take away 1. And then for this one, n is 2, uh, because it's the second term in the sequence, so I need to take away 1 to get 1. So I've worked out now that to get from my first term, number 1, to this 0, I need to take away 1. So the second part, which is added onto here, is n minus 1. Therefore, the overall position to term rule is 2n squared plus n minus 1. Okay, if you'd like to pause the video and have a go at this second one, please do. Okay, if you have had a go, let's have a look at this. So first of all, consider the first and second difference. The first difference is minus 3 minus 1 plus 1 plus 3. Weird. And the second one is plus 2. The second difference is 2. Therefore, A must be half of that amount, which is 1. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. So that means that we must start our equation with n squared. To determine the rest of the formula, you need to subtract n squared from each term of the sequence. So if we look at the sequence again, we've got 4 as our first number. So n stands for the term, and 4 is the first term in the sequence. So 1 squared is 1. And then here, 1 is our second term, so 2 squared is 4. So because it's our second term, we have to square 2. 0 is our third term. So that would be 9, 4th term is 16, and 5th term is 25. So our new sequence would be 3, minus 3, minus 9, minus 15, and minus 21. And because you've got that new sequence, we can now treat it like a linear sequence. So work out the difference between, and it's exactly the same as we did here, work out the difference between 
these three at uh, these 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 numbers so here we've gone three to minus three which means it's minus six minus three to minus nine is minus six minus nine to minus fifteen minus six so everything is minus six so it must start with minus six n and then we need to figure out how we get from minus six to three which is our first term and that means we need to add nine so we've done the quadratic section here and then this bit is where we get back to the linear section and then we've got this bit that we can add on. So our overall position to term rule is n squared minus 6n plus 9. Okay, so why don't you um, pause the video and find the position to term rule for each of these quadratic sequences. Okay, if you've paused the video and had a go, here are your answers. Okay, so n squared plus 2n plus 1, n squared plus 4n, 3n squared plus 7n minus 8, 2n squared minus 3n plus 6, 2n squared minus 4n minus 7, 3n squared minus 6n minus 10, minus n squared plus n, minus 2n squared plus 4n minus 4, and finally, minus 2n squared minus 5n minus 3. So I hope you got all those right and you understand the quadratic sequences. They can get a bit tricky, so make sure you practice. Okay, so the final thing I want to look at, and this will only take a few minutes, is Fibonacci sequences. The Fibonacci numbers are the numbers in the following sequence, and it's called the Fibonacci sequence. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. So it's just the beginning of the sequence. This sequence can go on forever and ever. Well, for a very long time anyway. Can you spot the pattern? So if you, if you haven't spotted the pattern, pause the video, see if you can do it. Okay, so the next number, this is the pattern, is found, is found, my bad, sorry, by adding up the two numbers before it. Formally, it can be written like this, but you don't need to remember that at all. So all you need to know is that 1 add 1 makes 2, 1 add 2 makes 3, 2 add 3 makes 5, 3 add 5 makes 8, and so on, all the way up to the Fibonacci, uh, for the Fibonacci sequence. So, rule, Fibonacci sequence. The next term in the sequence is the sum of the two previous terms. That's all you need to remember, really, for the Fibonacci sequence. Don't worry about remembering the formula. <laughs> So as you can see here, we have 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, and 5. This 5 is made up of 2 and 3 added together. This 8 is made up of 3 and 5 added together. And this 13 is made up of 5 and 8 added together. And so on and so forth. Okay, so I'd like you to pause the video and have a go at these. I want you to find the first 10 terms of this Fibonacci sequence. Okay, so it's a different Fibonacci sequence, but the same rules apply. Okay, so we if you've paused the video and had a go, here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So the sixth term must be 12 add 19, which is 31. The sixth term is the fourth term plus the fifth term, which is obviously what we've seen here. Now the seventh term, we need to do 19 add 31, which gives us 50. And then we do 31 add 50, which gives us 81. And then 50 plus 81 gives us 131. And finally, 81 plus 131 gives us 212. So those are the first 10. We have the first five there, and you should have worked out the next five, giving us the first 10 terms of this Fibonacci sequence. Okay. Okay, so that's all you really need to understand about the Fibonacci sequence. So I hope you've understood the geometric series and how to find the nth term. It can get a bit tricky, like I say, but if you concentrate on the assignment and really take notes when you're watching these lectures, you should be fine. Um, the quadratic sequences were quite tricky as well, but again, you will only get simple ones. Just make sure you take detailed notes and try your best on the quizzes or the assignment. Uh, the Fibonacci sequence was quite easy to understand, um, so you should be able to just um, answer questions regarding the Fibonacci sequence because it will just be adding the previous two terms together. Okay, so well done. Thank you so much for using Cupid Education and I hope to see you next time.